this does go a little late, which by the way, games two and three, or uh, rather games one and three, went very long. Uh, again, post past 18 minutes, mm -hmm. they want to make sure that Benny Cutie becomes a decisive win. Well, I mean, with Liquid Echo on the blue side up against Falcon Esports on the red, I think this is really scary, right? Because even for JP, he's going to imagine, he hits level four, he's going to drop the portal, and... Not many people are going to take it, right? I think at this point, JP, JP is going to play a very different role of influencing the lanes without having to call the entire team to make the big play. Yep, uh, I think you, you got it spot on. It's not all in, but which members matter at the time, and then they can do cleanup, which really, there is very little cleanup. It's not like they're playing an assassin meta. This is this is a meta, this is a lineup that could have happened like six months ago. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And I think that Liquid Echo, one of the few interactions that uh, could actually be very beneficial, let Falcon Esports make that play, right? Bait out these big alts, get chunked out, but just survive. And once you survive, you start recalling. When you're back at base, that's when JP comes in with a big fight to send you a, a straight into enemy lines. Which is what they were lacking in game number three, the re-engage, the potential mm -hmm. for the post big time CC re-engage. And here you see Dax, you see Benny. They're on relatively expensive heroes. Like I'd say more the Harith. The Roger, he wants to snowball, but if he's not able to snowball, there's really not much he can do after he gets the farm, after he gets these objectives, which by the way, I think, again, another point goes to Liquid Echo. I think they have very good objective control. Yeah, I do think that, man, actually, I'm going to take that back. I think that Falcon Esports probably has it a little bit better, right? And they can technically hold Liquid Echo hostage around these areas thinking, hey, are we going to fight now? Are we going to, like, drop those big alts? For the first one, I think they should back off here. There's no reason to get involved just yet, especially since First Blood hasn't been cheap. Oh, here we go. The CC, Carl TZ gets his heavy spin and retribution on point. A freeze by PX7. Kidex in trouble. Looking for the burst. JP coming in. The shortcut who's coming through everybody but too quickly falcon esports has dispersed luckily benicuri can just re-exit mm -hmm. nicely done honestly nicely done from both sides right i was really worried that kid x might end up dying there and i think that would have been a good gold uh surge for liquid echo but for the most part in that trade liquid echo come up on top when it comes down to resources battle spells as well majority of them are still up and at the end of the day they still got the turtle that's right it's clean uh, as compared to you know, some of uh, their engages in even game one and three, right? Some of them came expensive. Here they're playing as clean as possible. Yeah, I don't think we're getting the Echo Express this time around, you know? The Liquid Express is going to have take a step back. There's a lot of things that need to go right for them if they want to initiate cleanly. Yep, uh, the Liquid Stampede only really happens when it's a clear path. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go through speed bumps. Uh, th th there can't be no distractions. So they have to set up a solid early to mid so that eventually Benny Cutie becomes that decisive force in the late game. Well... Speaking of decisive forces, PX7 has been playing a really strong game, right? Let's not forget that naturally, as he scales up later and later and later, the more uh, magic damage that he actually builds up really uh, works well with him, right? Because the CC will be extended even longer per stat. So I think that Falcon Esports, they have a decent later stage of the game, but it really comes down to how many people can they catch in the giant fly swatting composition during the team fight. Yeah, which they have three of. Again, you mentioned PX7, that's why. Mm -hmm. Another would be Royal Milk, who seems to be a uh, I'm offended specialist. Mm -hmm. So uh, very fit. Uh, He's very, very PC. Yeah, he, he fits in 2024 on the internet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have Kid X, right? Uh, who we now know is amazing on the Tigreal, but he also now has a little bit of re-engage with the Minotaur, the Minoan Fury, and uh, the Motivation Roar. So how about round two here in the Turtle? First objective was scored by Liquid Echo. Let's see if Falcon Esports now, uh, with all of their ults online, if they can try and score this one. Uh, it's not going to be as easy, right? I think, uh, especially, just keep your eyes on, like, both Royal Milk and Kid X. They're looking for angles here. Oh. Here we go. The shortcut coming in oh. from a JP. Sanford walks through. Big Earth Shatter there. And then the big jump as well. Double Minoan Fury from both sides. Sanji draws first blood. We're having ground beef for lunch, folks. And now Benny, Cyclone, I threw but the damage has been done. Three for nine plus the turtle. Thank you very much. I, what? Let's look at the replay one more time. How did this, 
how did this go so badly for them, right? A majority of the members got absolutely blasted by JP's uh, giant stun because they got they all corralled around him and weren't able to burst him down in time. And not to mention that even for PX7, he was completely out of that fight, but got some relevant CC and they still lost. I think that they needed to initiate just a wee bit earlier, specifically Kid X. I think that Royal Milk could have taken his time a little bit more, especially since the battle spells weren't up in time. I think that Falcon Esports really need to, if they are going to play this War of Attrition, start considering the bigger factors like battle spells and most importantly, alt timings. Yeah, I would assume there was a little anime moment between Sanji and Kid X <laughs> where, okay, I see you ramp up with the Minoan Fury the first wave mm -hmm. and then Sanji just in the nanosecond after, I also do it, which I think turns the tide of that fight. If there was no uh, response from Sanji, if there was no Minoan Fury after the Minoan Fury, that would have been a Falcon Esports fight, definitely. Absolutely, and that's something that they need to really consider, right? Have that foresight. This, okay, you made the first mistake, that's totally fine. Three kills go over to Liquid Echo. It's not the end of the world. And I think most importantly, we have to look at Benny. He's already like gone with a quick lane swap down to the bottom side of the map just to make sure that Kid X or, and even Royal Milk can get involved for the upcoming turtle happening in 22 seconds. Mm -hmm. All this while, Liquid Echo asserting dominance in mid. Falcon Esports reciprocating as well, hunkering down with three. And now the river flows. Faster rotations coming in, and who's going to ride the wave? Sanford and Kid X. Oh, yeah, they're, they're all going to try to get this last turtle here. Solid setup, though, uh, in the uh, top lane. Liquid Echo just got a passive push. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Do they really want to do this? I feel like not yet. I feel like Dax is already... Oh, too late. The fight has started. Here we go. I'm offended by Royal Milk displacing them all. Dax in trouble. Sanji gets the kill. Pushing back Royal Milk, Kid X, and PX7. And that's all she wrote. Falcon Esports dispersed. You get nothing good, sir. Oh, Wait. JP. Not going to spot Benny. Not this time. Okay, not this time. He doesn't cancel it out. At least there's still some hope here. Rather interesting decision coming in from Falcon Esports, right? Like, they know. They know for a fact. They're risking it for the biscuit, thinking that it might be a 4v4 and Benny QT ain't going to be there. But they didn't lane swap. They didn't see any rotation. They had no information. This was just pure game sense, hoping and praying that it's going to be enough. And now, because of that, Carl is significantly ahead of the curve in terms of EXP, and Dax is falling further and further behind. He's stuck on a wind talker right now that's why falcon esports had all the owners in the world to be the aggressive team oh sanji anime like reflexes dodging that freeze keeping himself alive still denying falcon esports anything on the map literally just told px7 not today kid not today nope uh, it could go even oh here we go jp from the other side popping the shortcut who's coming through frigid ice no one home the zaman force and the double middle fury one more time and there's a ko on the kid x royal milk and benny follow through as well still nothing on the board for the burmese benny cutie gets a double on the way out and that's going to accelerate him way further ahead let's look at the replay one more time because this was a great angle right once that shortcut comes in the counter engage from kid x and they realize they don't have enough damage Benny can only hit one target at a time, and Dax is a little too far behind to actually supplement it. Now look, Carl T is getting disrespectful because he knows how strong oh, he is, and the oh, one shot, almost there, almost. Oh, the time traveler coming in from odd angles like Tenet up in this. Oh man, uh, it feels like they've done this before, and now they're just playing this in reverse in real time. Finally, as the Lord does spawn, I think the only hope that Falcon Esports has is whether or not they can actually catch Benny QT off. And that's under a couple of conditions. One, force him to use that Purify, and somehow Royal Milk pulls him all the way back with a flicker. Oh, wow. All this while you were laying down the options, Benny Cutie just blitzes the Lord. He just you see that himself. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just like, all right, get in. You, you, you go ahead, lay down the uh, win cons. I'm just going to take the massive objective. What is the gold lead now? T almost 10k, sir. Exactly. Almost 10k. Yeah. That's why I respect Benny QT. At least he gives me the time to actually talk about it. But now that they have the Lord, hopefully they can get an inhibitor. And honestly, it's starting to look like a checkmate angle. Yeah. Uh, Falcon Esports, uh, good news and bad news. Uh, good news is underneath these turrets, they have all the more better punishing power. Maybe the double Minoan Fury situation might not be as bad. But bad news is they're down on firepower. We're going to go back to the problem. Again, chicken and the egg. You get the CC, where's the damage? You don't get the damage in, 
how do you plant the CC? So now look at this, a trio lane push. Mid's got a wave, Top's got a wave, Lord is down bottom, and Liquid Echo have masterfully orchestrated the push. I think that it's really important for them that Liquid Echo take as many, oh, Royal Milk's in trouble. Oh, Dodge is the heavy spin though, so he will live, but I couldn't say the same for this tier two in mid. Uh -huh. But these inhibitors, right, that's the most important part. If Liquid Echo can at least take one of them, that's already a huge win as the second wave is starting to fall. I mean, I'm saying this true for both pennies, and now the fight continues to seven force. Let me know in Fury. They still live. The pull from Royal Milk. Benny Cutie punishes him. Three defenders left in Falcon Esports base as a wave stands in mid. The flicker onward. Earth shatter. The full combo. Sanford still standing. Still no one falls. Liquid Echo inside Falcon Esports' base. They need a wave somewhere if they want to end the game, but. Death Timers, Benny's gonna be back in time, and same goes for Royal Milk. Falcon Esports has another opportunity to fight back, but it's looking extremely grim. Here we go, the shortcut coming in. Kid X might get bursted down. Benny Cutie gets the kill served up to him. He says, thanks, 40, thanks. And now the base up next. Carl Tizi plants the heavy spin. The base is gonna fall. So...